Uh, tonight, Late Night is proud to present the first installment of a new segment that salutes the talented professionals who put this program together. It's educational, and since PBS was not interested, we decided we'd show it ourselves. Late Night is more than just the jokes, the songs, and the fancy sets. Late Night is people, not just the marvelous stars you see on the show, but the people you don't see. The people behind Late Night. Howard Vinitsky is one of the people behind Late Night. He's the sound effects man, a tough job that requires more than the standard training, apprenticeship, and examinations other NBC employees go through. It demands a special talent for listening. Where does Howard get his ideas for sound effects? Why, from everyday life. You see, Howard hears things a little differently than most of us. He's able to detect sounds that laymen like you and I might not notice. The job of the sound effects technician is not for everyone. The hours are long, the pace is relentless, and every moment, Howard's eagle ears are open, listening for any new sounds he might be able to use on the show. As the time approaches to tape the show, Howard prepares himself. All he can do now is wait for that special moment when there's a job that must be done. And two gentlemen, each of them representing uh, the East, one the East Coast, the other the West Coast. They both work for NBC. We'll talk a little bit more about them later. <laughs> yes, the moment of truth has come and gone, and somehow in that one magical moment, it was all worthwhile. But there are a few congratulations because for Howard, the job is not over. He will be back tomorrow and the next day and the next. Repeating this grueling procedure, show after show. And that's what makes sound effects man Howard Vinitsky one of the people behind Late Night. Howard Vinitsky, we'll be right back with the Commissioner of Baseball, Bowie Kuhn. Welcome back to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Edward Ruscha will be joining us, and uh, tonight, uh, Late Night is proud, and by Late Night being proud, I mean we here at Late Night are, is proud, are proud. Everyone affiliated with the show and even strangers on the street are proud. <laughs> to present the second installment of a segment that salutes the talented professionals who put this very program together. Late Night is more than just the jokes, the songs, the fancy sets. Late night is people. Not just the marvelous stars you see on the show, but the people you don't see. Yes, the people behind late night. Jimmy Fitzgerald is one of the people behind late night. He's the prop manager and naturally basks in all the glory and glamour that comes with such a position. But with a job like this, also comes responsibility. Just as a surgeon has his scalpel, Mr. Fitzgerald also has his tools. And his operating room is the NBC Late Night Studio. His job isn't one you can learn in some school. You see, Mr. Fitzgerald is the only person authorized to serve coffee on the set of Late Night. 
authority he has earned with experience. Colombia, Java, Brazil, Kenya. These terms may confuse the layman, but Mr. Fitzgerald knows these are the countries that produce the best coffee in the world. He has to know it. It's his job. Many brands will be tested, but only one will be good enough to use on late night. As the magic hour approaches, Mr. Fitzgerald has fully prepared himself and his equipment. All he can do now is wait. And when the coffee runs out, Jimmy Fitzgerald runs out with a fresh cup, as only he can brew it. Yes, Jimmy knows it's a job well done. The perfect ending to a hard day's work. But he'll be back tomorrow because he's a professional, because he wants to keep the show successful in the ratings, and because Jimmy Fitzgerald, prop manager, is one of the people behind Late Night. He certainly is, Jimmy Fitzgerald, and we're proud to have him, by golly. My next guest... Uh, have, you, have you ever wondered what goes into the making of a major network show such as this? Yeah, yeah well, I, I guess it's crossed all of our minds occasionally. And so tonight we are proud to present another installment of a feature which salutes the talented professionals who put Late Night together. Late Night is more than just the jokes, the songs, the fancy sets. Late Night is people. Not just the marvelous stars you see on the show, but the people you don't see. Yes, the people behind Late Night. The program, my name is David Letterman. We have assembled a fine hour of television for you tonight. And before we commence, let me, uh, reading an interesting study from the University of Columbia just up the street here in New York. Uh, apparently now, most incurable illnesses, uh, all emotional illness, and most juvenile crime is now thought to be caused by bargain muffins. <laughs> Yes, another day, another first-rate opening joke. But where does this endless stream of witty observations come from? Tonight, meet the man behind the opening joke, comedy writer Steve O'Donnell. Steve O'Donnell starts each day with what some call an impossible task. His assignment, to write a perfect opening remark. Yes, Steve's job begins even before he arrives. On his way to work, Steve makes notes of all possible areas of comic inspiration. Now he must go through that list to find the ideal target for his satiric bar. Today, Steve's joke concerns bargain muffins. But Steve's not ready to write yet, no. First, Steve thoroughly researches his topic. And at last, he's ready and types the words he is sure will make America laugh. <laughs> Matadors call it the moment of truth. And to Steve, that moment comes when he hands in his joke. <laughs> and
and nervously awaits a verdict. Final approval by network executives. First stop, standards and practices. And then it's on to the programming department. Next, audience research, program analysis, marketing, and legal affairs. Just moments before airtime, the joke is finally cleared. And it is presented to the American public. Before we commence, let me, uh, reading an interesting study from the University of Columbia just up the street here in New York, uh, apparently now, most incurable illnesses, uh, all emotional illness, and most juvenile crime is now thought to be caused by bargain muffins. <laughs> yes, unlike the rest of the country, Steve doesn't have to watch the show. His job is done. He has written an opening joke that brings new glory to late night NBC and the entire American nation. The show's just beginning as Steve's day is ending, but he'll be back tomorrow because he knows the show can't begin without him. And that's why he is one of the people behind Late Night. We'll be right back with David Johansson. This evening, uh, maybe you can sense a special glow around me because we're going to introduce the first installment of a brand new feature tonight that's already become a real favorite among our staff members, a feature that we like to call Know Your Staff. And tonight, we begin with a man who not only runs the stupid Petrick auditions for this program, but can be seen nationwide in a major motion picture. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome production assistant Chris Elliott right here. Chris. Now, uh, first of all, Chris, tell the people what you do as a production assistant on this show. Uh, well, a production assistant has, a various, um, has various amounts of, of things that he is required to do. I, um, Stupid Petrix is kind of my, my baby, okay. and uh, it's, it's the segment that I'm the most proud of. Uh, other than that, uh, well, I do a lot of Xeroxing. You do a lot of Xeroxing. All right. Now, uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Elliott has been on this program before. Let's take a look at some of his work from this program oh, in the past. And uh, if you can oh, tell right. us... That's the, uh, the uh, subway pole that I played. Playing uh, the part of a subway ago. pole. That would mm -hmm. be you on the left. That's All right. right. And that's, what is this? Uh, that's actually the first time I appeared on the show. That's garbage. Uh -huh. And that was me as garbage. Garbage. All mm -hmm. right. And finally... And, of course, that's the turtleneck pants. Yeah, that uh, was... Which was in... <laughs> one, of, one of your better ones. Now, you're... You're also in a major motion picture. That's correct. We've got a clip from the film. Tell That's us right. what the film is. Set it up. It's the new John Sayles film, Liana. Uh, I play Liana's assist assistant. She is a uh, lighting designer by profession. Uh -huh. And my, in fact, the, the name of my character is the lighting designer. The lighting assistant. designer. Assistant, um, all right. Which causes some confusion on the credits. They think I was the assistant oh, lighting designer. All right, well, let's take a look at that now. Who's Chris Elliott playing the lighting designer's assistant in the new film, Liana. Should be exciting. <laughs> Yeah. When they're through, stick red and all the ones along the back wall. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Looks like you got a 
It looks like you got a hit on your hands yeah. there, Chris. Well, with, uh, that was just the first scene. Now you're in some more of the movie. All right, let's take another look. Film, you same uh, part? Same part. I'm kind of her assistant. I'm helping her out in the scene. I think okay. That's all I and these are the only two times you're... Okay, uh, another clip from Leon. I don't know what I should ask for. What do you need to make? I just can't afford to do this for free anymore. What if she doesn't have anything in the budget? Then I'll probably be getting a promotion. It is. It's unbelievable. It, uh, I was cut out of one scene, uh -huh. which uh, kind of uh, makes you wonder how many treasures are lying on some editing oh, room yeah. floors around the I mean, country. you can feel the heat yeah, coming sure off can. of that. Well, when you're working with an actress like that, uh, Linda Griffiths, she gave me all the help in the world, and I uh -huh. couldn't have done it without her, and John Sales as well. Oh, geez. You know, uh, we're delighted to have you as a member of the Thank staff, but much. I guess Hollywood will be calling pretty soon. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to jump to any conclusions. I'm happy Xeroxing and doing stupid and things. And your, your father is uh, half of the legendary comedy team. Bob and yeah, Ray. and I was wa watching um, a couple of weeks ago when we ran some repeats. Um, you ran the show that he was on, and you introduced me off stage, and the yeah. audience applauded yeah. as if it was a, a big deal for me to have been born. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, well, it was, it was, and uh, a pleasure, uh, Chris. Thank you. Uh, know your staff, Chris Elliott. We'll be right back. A lot of time. My thanks to everybody who was here tonight. Chris Elliott, he does a lot of Xeroxing. We'll see you Monday. Thank you, folks. Welcome back to the show. Uh, about a month ago, we started a new segment on this program entitled uh, Get to Know Your Staff, and uh, we have scheduled this particular installment two or three times, but lately have not seemed to find the time for it. Tonight, by golly, it's going to happen. Get a hold of something. And now it's time for the latest installment of a feature that's become very popular with our staff, Know Your Staff. Tonight's staff member, ladies and gentlemen, writer, crime fighter, George Meyer. Ah, uh, I, I guess you're glad to finally get on with this, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Now, uh, what, what was uh, your feeling when you got bumped the first night? Well, uh, I, I'm kind of nervous about going on TV, yeah. so I, I, it was one of relief and uh -huh. elation. Now, now what, about the se <laughs> what about the second night when you were bumped? Well, it was the same sort of thing, only I kind of wanted to get it over with that time. That's right. And I just, you know, I didn't want to get the reputation for not showing up That's either. That's right. You know, like, <laughs> Same problem. <laughs> <It's my hair>. <laughs> <laughs> and what about tonight? You must just be bubbling over with excitement. Yeah, I'm very uh, yeah. excited. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, uh, George is a, a staff writer for this program and has been since when? Late 50s. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, since the show started. Yeah. Now, uh, but this is not the first time you've been on the program, has it? No, uh, I was on as the guy who refused to see E.T. All right, let's take a look at that. Now, here he is. There he is playing the part of the man who refused to, to see E.T. Now, in addition to that appearance, you've been on other network television shows also, haven't you? Well, just one. I was on Jeopardy. All right. Um, and there he is, right in the middle. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You and John Hinckley were in the AV club <laughs> together, I think. Uh, uh, now, tell him, uh, now you won big, you won some big money on Jeopardy, didn't you? Well, I didn't win the big prize, but I won $2,000, and I won um, some root beer, some, <laughs> some honey, some shrimp breading. Shrimp some, breading? Yeah. And, and, you know, like hush puppy mix and oh, yeah. you know that kind yeah. of stuff and fish fry mix uh -huh. you know uh -huh. and i want some towels too and you want some towels right yeah. and uh do you still have any of that stuff uh, i still have the towels yeah uh, and i great. think my mom has some of the shrimp bread in <laughs> <laughs> uh now i was uh, when i watched you on jeopardy i was taken with how polite you were you what did you actually call the host of the show i called him art art yeah that was great uh now <laughs> Do one of those categories, famous landmarks for four, just like uh, you were on the show. Famous landmarks for 200, Art. Just like that. That's the way it goes. <laughs> uh, now, uh, w you also have uh, hobbies, and uh, I guess we're going to look at some photographs. Every time we have, you, you tell them, George. 
Well, I, I'm kind of a boxing fan, and one of the things I like about this show is that I've gotten a chance to meet some of the great boxers who I've been following over the years. Okay, why don't you and talk the folks through this pictorial here that oh, we're going to okay. look at. Uh, there's Joe Frazier and Marvis Frazier with myself. Now, that's you in the middle, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Jerry Cooney. Jerry uh, Cooney? Already yep. on there, yeah. Leon Spinks, uh -huh. the uh, cruiserweight. Oh, there's Tex Cobb, Tex the Cobb. guy who fought Larry Holmes. He was a very colorful fellow, wasn't he, mm -hmm. Tex? He was yeah, on very the nice show. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Larry Holmes, of course. The heavyweight champion. Now, he, is yeah. he fighting again soon, Larry? Yeah, he's going to fight Tim Witherspoon pretty soon. No contest, or is that going to be anything? I don't think so. I mean, he's undefeated. He, yeah. He's never really had a problem. Probably retire rather than ever lose the championship? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay. Any more fight fix pictures? Um, oh, there's Michael Spinks. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's Leon's brother. He's a light heavyweight. You pretty much champ. have the same pose for all of these guys, don't you? There's yeah. Sugar Ray Leonard. Oh, Sugar Ray, yeah. Right. Yeah. Welterweight champ until yeah. he retired. Now, uh, the other half of this introduction, crime fighter George Meyer. This happened two weeks ago? Well, no, actually last Tuesday. Last Tuesday. Um, I, w I don't really think of myself as a crime fighter. I was just on my way to a restaurant with a couple of the other writers on the show, Max Pross and Tom Gamble. This was on your own time, of course. Right. <laughs> yeah, it had been a long morning of writing material for uh -huh. the show, and, and I just decided to take a break. Uh -huh. And uh, I, the sidewalk was really crowded because there were so many people avoiding the slush. You know, there'd been that big storm. Oh, yeah, storm. right after the storm. And I noticed somebody was sort of crowding me from behind and kind of bumping into me and, and stepping on my heels. And it, at first, I, I didn't pay any attention, but when it kept happening, I thought, it must have been like Tom Gamble behind me trying to give me Another a flat tire. Another staff writer, Tom Gamble. Right. Yeah. And uh, so I turned around. I'm sorry, trying to give you a what? A flat tire. Well, you know, in, in junior high, you know, you stand on somebody's <laughs> shoe or something, give them a flat tire. Anyway, that, that, <laughs> I haven't had one of those in a long time, so that's That, by I, the way, is all you need to know about Tom Gamble, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, but it yeah. turned out it was not your friend Tom Gamble. No, it was a guy taking my wallet out of my pocket. And I, as a I thug. Felt, yeah, well, I guess so. But I had a, a down jacket on, and I couldn't really feel his hand going in, but I noticed something wrong, you know, went yeah. wrong. So I reached over, and my wallet was gone. And then I saw a guy kind of forcing his way through the crowd against the flow of the people. And so I, I started running after him and, and yelling, you know, stop that guy, he's got my mm -hmm. wallet, you know. I didn't really have a chance to think. I just hoped yeah. that that was the right guy. And then you ran... <laughs> <laughs> you, you then ran him down, didn't you? Well, yeah. Um, I, I started running after him, and he ran around the corner and um, ran out into the street, and I, I did too, and then, then he ran back on the sidewalk, and all I could think about was all the stuff that I'd have to call Credit in. Credit cards, you know, license. Yeah, um, like yeah. a library card, driver's and, but license. But the man, you know. the, the man, was, the man no, was arrested, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, I caught up to him, and then, then I made him give me my wallet, and the police showed up. And, yeah, that's, and, now that's an unbelievable story. That's a dangerous thing to do, isn't it? I know. I, I'm not really sure if I should have done it or no, not. No, you did just fine. I did get my wallet. <laughs> Justice was served. Crime fighter George Meyer. Uh, we got to go away. We'll be right back with Sly Stone. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're, we're uh, changing the lineup here tonight, so if you're keeping score at home, uh, please make the following change. Uh, now, Ms. Bernhardt will be back another night soon? All right. Um, well, she's coming up into the audience after the show, so don't worry. Uh, it's time once again, however, for a feature that we like to call Know Your Staff, and tonight's staff member is our show's film coordinator. Please welcome Mr. Rick Sheckman, ladies and gentlemen. probably wasn't smart of me to announce that she won't be here and then introduce you, was it? Well, you know. <laughs> you, uh, you have been scheduled in this position for many, many nights, well, in fact. I'm the new permanent standby guest. The, uh, the first question on the notes here is, you won the office Oscar pool. Yeah, about two months ago yeah. I won that. I had about 17 out of 24 correct choices. Now, as a film coordinator, uh, what exactly do you do? Well, basically I do the film clips for the guest segments, and if the writers need something like fish cleaning night, where we had a segment of you cleaning fish. 
Or for the guest segments, it would be something like George Burns. We'll get a segment for him and cut it. Uh -huh. And stuff like that. All right. And you have some film tonight, uh, which is... Yeah, uh, what we have is up in the department, we keep some stuff in case somebody comes up like Betty Davis. We have it ready. And these are outtakes of Betty Davis, Jimmy Stewart, She has James been Kettner. bugging us uh, night and day to get on this show. <laughs> sort of like Jack Carr. Yeah. Uh, so we strung this together one day, and it's ready. Okay. So this is uh, essentially, and it's all self-explanatory beyond from that? The okay. Uh, Mr. Sheckman has brought some film for us to gaze at, uh, so let's do it. Captain telephone wires. Spend your time building up new rackets. So that when McLaren comes up for air, you find a dozen more guys. Go, 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 go. I'm screwy about it. Green fields and fresh air. Yeah, green yeah. fields. I'm just fed up moving around here. Well, I hope you don't think that I'm enjoying it. Well, it's this business of waiting, waiting, waiting for something to happen. That's what burns me up. And the fact that I can't remember the line burns me up more. <laughs> I need to justify their lives, I do. I'm a physician. I'm a surgeon. Damn it. This <laughs> <Smell. laughs> Alameda will send us wind and uh, weather position changes and chips and so on the thing. Uh, now, the I give orders around here, they take them from me and nobody else. Incidentally, here's your record, the girl of the working. <laughs> Can't take any chances now. Chances? What's all the emergency about? I just had a baby in the ladies' room. <laughs> <laughs> Something about the way you rise, it puts my heart in my mouth. Woo! I'm very sorry, I burned myself. You're right out of the No. Oh. I burned myself. You can't stand it, I tell you. I feel like taking his place and waiting for a stream of hot juice to shock shock you into kingdom. Damn it. Not again, not again, not again. Go ahead. Here we go. Action! Oh, son of a bitty, son of a bitty, son of a bitty, son of a bitty, a gun. <laughs> you thought I was going to say, as a son of a bitch, didn't you? <laughs> Comedies and gotten up and gone home. But they'll be stirred by this play. And they'll stay in their seats and they'll yell, yell, yell. They're yell. Cylinders and old worn out spark plugs. You haven't got any more romance about you than that old pair of pliers. <laughs> 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 Pull your hair back. Here we are, Senor, from soup to nuts. Well, <laughs> some heavyweights there. Yeah, I want to thank our editors, Melanie and Fran and Brian, who helped me put it together. All right, Greg. Uh, pleasure to see you on the show, finally. Thank you for helping us out tonight. Uh, we got to go away. We'll be right back. Thank you very much, folks. We're out of time. Uh, my apologies to Sandra Bernhardt. We will have her on as soon as possible, and I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to talk with her tonight. Tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen, it's Camping with Barry White. Barry will be here, Jacqueline Bissett, and Bob Goldthwaite. Have a nice evening. Thank you, folks. Good night. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's time now for a, a feature we like to call Know Your Staff, and tonight's subject is one of our beloved segment producers. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Robert Morton. Robert. Hello, Robert, nice to see you, nice sir. Nice to see you, David. Uh, tell us, and uh, all of America, what exactly a, a segment producer does. Uh, we're responsible, basically, for dealing with the guests on the show. Uh -huh. uh, we write help write the questions. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the segment producers 
both those very questions. That's right. The other segment producer produced Gerard, your segment. Gerard Mulligan, That's yes. Right. We switch off. We choose and decide what guests we get. Yeah, now we, you've been with us since we uh, went on the air. Yes. And where else have you worked? You've had uh, a lot of experience in I television, was, uh, haven't you? I was a writer of Good Morning America. and The uh, writer. Now, what kind of things did you write there? Uh, same stuff. Mm -hmm. Same stuff, you know, questions, uh, introductions, things like that. You Dealing with the guests. You didn't help David pick out his sweaters or anything, no, did you? No, no, yeah. no, no, nothing to do uh -huh. with that. His ties a little bit. But uh, that show's still on the air even though I left. And, uh, I know, it, it looked yeah. uh, shaky for a minute. Uh, then I did the Tomorrow Show, and that show is, you know, yeah, gone. I don't think uh, that's on anymore, no, is it? No, no more, no more. No. Uh, and... Uh, now I'm here. Now you get to, and we're happy to have you. Now you get to talk to a lot of interesting people. Oh, yeah, you? a yeah. lot of interesting. Uh, well, all the guests, we do a pre-interview before the guests come on. And, uh, yeah, I've met some, some pretty nice people. In fact, we have some, I believe, some photographs of uh, Robert with the... Uh, yeah, I, I, I've, it's, it's like my desire in life to have is, my picture taken with the most beautiful women in the world. This is Nastasia Kinski. You were, of course, on the, on the left. Yes, that's me. She looked pretty happy there. This is you on Lauren the left Hutton. again. Lauren Hutton. Right there, very nice woman. Yeah. And uh, I had breakfast at Jersey Kaczynski's house once. That's right. But again, that's the kind of thing a lot of people have had breakfast at. <laughs> uh, now, uh, th this is not by any stretch of the imagination the first time you've been on this show, is it? No, as a matter of fact, this, this show, uh, me being on this show, actually saved my life. In what uh, fashion? Well, I was, I was 50 pounds heavier than I am now, and uh, I was on the show one time with Steve Allen. Uh, a lot of the times you use the staff to, to act, uh, do bit pieces and mm -hmm. things like that. And I was on with Steve Allen, and I looked like a, a fat tub, and I saw it on TV, and I said, I have to go on a diet, lose That's weight. Right. I, think, I think Steve went on a diet after that no, also. No, I don't think so. Uh, don't we're going to take a look at uh, what Robert is referring to now. If you uh, watch closely, the monitors here in the studio. One thing and to say to you guys. Schmack, schmack! 30 seconds to air. 30 seconds to air? Okay, fine. Oh, my. Oh, my. Terrible. Terrible. And, and what did you weigh then? I, I weighed 197. And, you and now, now I weigh about 145. 146. That's very impressive. Yeah. Very yeah. impressive. Thank you. Thank you. And it was the inspiration of seeing myself looking like a... Now, you were up. more recently in, inspired uh, because of this show. Is that yes, correct? Yes, another time. Uh, I was on just about a week ago, and, and I was... Uh, in the process of growing a beard, and I... Now, what did you want to grow a beard for? Uh, look a little older, I guess, you know. I, I, this is no detective disguise, No, no, was no, it? no, 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 no disguise. And uh, I tried to grow this beard, and, and I saw myself on the air, and it uh, looked uh, raunchy. So uh, I shaved the next day. So, so this changed my life in another way. It didn't save my life. And the lucky answer. viewers are also going to now get to see you with a beard. With They've the seen beard, you yes. fat, now they're going to see you raunchy. Yes. What a... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. What Robert, exactly there he is. Uh, yep. He talks to animals. Uh -huh. Very talented man. Very talented, and he's yeah. bringing with him uh, Sylvia, the world's most amazing pigeon. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And they yeah. will have a conversation tomorrow? Yeah, and he'll talk to Sylvia, and he actually throws Sylvia like an airplane. Yeah, you look much better. Yeah. Yeah. No, you look great. Yeah, thanks. Dave. You, look, you thanks, feel Dave. good? I feel great. You, I, well, you, you look we won't good. get into that. You look good, you feel good. I feel... You work hard, you play hard. I feel fair. Say it with me. <laughs> I work hard, I play hard, you I feel good, I look good. No, you screwed it up, but it's close enough. Uh, Robert Morton, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. <laughs> what? What are we doing? Oh, we're done. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's get a hold of ourselves. My mistake. This is the end of it, ladies and gentlemen. We're having too much fun. Uh, I want to thank Virginia Snyder, Roy Rogers, uh, Paul and the band, Mr. Bill Wendell. Tomorrow night, folks, Robin Williams and Peter Tosh plus Stupid Petrix. We'll see you then. Good night. <laughs>
It's time right now, however, for uh, another installment of a feature we like to call Know Your Staff. As a public service to our viewers, we periodically introduce you to the people who bring you this fine television program. A man who has put in a lot of years in this business, the voice of late night, our own Mr. Bill Wendell. Bill! Bill, uh, first of all, let me, we, uh, we came across this in our research. This is, uh, first of all, it's a, a card, looks like a, a postal card. Tell us what we're looking at here. This is? That's uh, Mr. Adventure. Mr. Adventure. Yep. And what, why were you dressed as Mr. Adventure, Bill? To put a couple of kids through school. This, this was uh, Bill Wendell, Mr. Adventure, and his Serial Theater Day. That's right. At Palisades Amusement Park, New Jersey, Saturday, July 18th, 1953. Right. You had a regular show as Mr. Uh, Adventure? Right. And July 19th, Palisades Amusement Park closed for good. Closed it up forever. Yeah. That, what, where was that? Was that on the old, uh, not the amusement park, but the Dumont show? Dumont Television. Yeah. Dumont Television, years ago. Well, you we just a, uh, showed, car, you know, Buck Rogers or whatever it was, and I spoke to the kids. We got like 17,000 letters a week. From... Spoke to the kids? Yeah. What kind of things would you tell the kids, Bill? Oh, you know, don't beat your dog and <laughs> things like yeah, that. Yeah, you can't go too far wrong with that. No, incidentally, I, you told me this afternoon, I was shocked to hear that, that you and your dog, Bob... Have the same uh, doctor. ...go yeah. to the same doctor. Now, Bill... Um... <laughs> Before we go on, Dave, uh, is it a real doctor, or do you both go to the vet? He's recognized in some states. Now, Bill, uh, when we had Edie Adams on here a while yeah. back, yeah. Uh, you also were telling us about your uh, working with Ernie Kovacs. And uh, again, give us an idea of what he was like to work with. Uh, number one, he was a charming man. Yeah. He truly was. He was a friend, worked with him for a couple of years. Uh, he was the world's worst poker player. Ernie would draw three cards to an inside straight. And uh, that's that's bad. That's very bad. Yeah. And uh, he spent money all the time. You guys would uh, gamble right before the show, after the show, and uh, sometimes during during the show. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've done my share of gambling during the show oh, also. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> we played the Hudson Theater, which was an old theater on Forty Fifth Street off of Broadway. Uh -huh. Right after rehearsal, and we didn't rehearse much, it was just the singers would come out and play with the band, bang. The curtains would close, the audience would start in, and we'd put an orange crate behind this, the screen, and we'd start to play poker. And I give you my word, one night there were about six of us playing poker around this orange crate. And the Hudson Theater was an old theater, it was like three stories up into the wings, high and an electrician was up there tightening one of the lights and he dropped a pair of electric pliers, you know, with the tape on sure. it. They must weigh about three or five pounds. It came down and it hit no more than two feet from where we were sitting at the orange crate. And Ernie just looked over as that thing went whap. Looked back at us and he said, whose deal is it? <laughs> that was the wildest thing. Unfazed. Was, unfazed at all. We have some uh, old film of you and Ernie Kovac, and I'm not sure what it is. Why don't you tell us what we're going to take a look at? I think we're going to have uh, a little bit of a thing that we used to have a great deal of success with called the Question Man. The Question Man. Right. From I, I would read the questions uh, or the answer, and uh, Ernie would go on from there. Okay. This was the first time this was ever done, incidentally. This has resurfaced in many different forms. It has it? indeed. And uh, what year, roughly, would this have been from? Mid-50s. Okay. Ernie Kovacs and uh, our own uh, Mr. Adventure, Bill Wendell, <laughs> and the Question Man, folks. Good morning, and welcome to another session with Mr. Question Man. All questions received by Mr. Question Man are carefully tabulated, and some of them are filed. A question from a lady interested in the ancient past. Mrs. Genevieve Hoban of Dallas, Texas writes, Dear Mr. Question Man, what was the name of the paper used by the ancient Egyptians? The Cairo Evening Times. <laughs> the question man. <laughs> now you have worked uh, with a lot of folks in television and even radio. Yeah. As we take a look at these photos, Bill, tell us a little bit about the person and the, the circumstance. Here's a gentleman that uh, just passed away recently, uh, Dave Garraway, and this was the show. This picture was out of the New York Post. Uh, this was really one of the great shows of television just starting, Wide Wide World. 
Now, is this, in this picture, I guess this was part of your job, periodically you'd walk up to Mr. Garraway and say, uh, Dave, how do you pronounce this word? Is that... Yeah, and <laughs> Dave also had a dog, and they'd go to the same doctor. All right. right? <laughs> and what do we have here? Uh, when, uh, when Hugh Downs, who was the announcer for Jack Parr, sat in for Jack, I would sit in for Hugh. Right. Here's and, Dodie Goodman yep. and uh, Louis Nye. And believe it or not, from horror films, Peter Lorre over here. Now, what kind of a guest was he on a talk show, Peter Lorre? He, uh, he would have a few scotches in the... Uh, he was a good guest. Pretty good, then. I yeah, guess. oh, he was And that's, that's you over here next to Dodie Goodman. On, this was uh, when Jack walked, I believe, right? When She's wearing Jack a, a did the Jack water, clock, yeah. uh, water closet uh, joke, right? Okay, and this... this Tic-tac-toe. Well, look at that elaborate set. Isn't that yeah, a uh, Oh, that's beautiful. This was in the days of live television. This show came from across the hall, right over here in yes. uh, 6B. And one day, somebody walked behind this set and kicked all the electric cables out, which meant that we didn't have any scoring. And for eight minutes, I tap danced, told the story yeah. of my life, uh, did 17 commercials, and it was just horror. Yeah, you don't want a, a tic-tac-toe audience riot on your hands. No, That's no, we had him. Ugly too. stuff. <laughs> now here is, this is Bill Wendell, the leading man. Yeah. Good heavens. Gosh, I don't know what to say about that. It looks <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> no, that's a fine photo, Bill. And what do you got here? First time that uh, Monty Hall came from Canada to do his first show, I did it with him, and there he is. Yep. What was uh, the name of the show? Uh, Stairway to the Stars, Stars, Stairway to the Stars, right. Here's Ernie and Edie and myself, and unnamed singer with guitar. That's at the close of you a show. Do you know who that man is? No. All right, let's see, how much time do we have left? Oh, now here's Mr. Adventure again, I guess. No, these were, uh, I did a lot of cowboy stuff, and we would Just go around. Just around the house, Bill? Or yeah. Was... <laughs> Pretty t tough following that horse around, but... <laughs> Joey Adams, I'd do anything for Joey, so I'm lighting a cigarette here. Uh-huh, getting tux. And, oh, here uh, we go. Here's, well, in this business, you know, Dave, once in a while you're out of work, so here I hired myself out as a butler to a very nice couple. Uh-huh. Uh, Nipsey Russell and Leslie Uggins. What show was that? Alan King. The Alan King show. All right, oh, and let's go out on this one. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. The My Fair Lady. Yes, sir. Bill Wendell, Mr. Adventure. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we'll be right back with Arsenio Hall. All right, uh, it's time for... Uh Time for another look behind the scenes here at Late Night. Uh, this is a segment we like to call Know Your Staff, and tonight the featured staff member will be our very own director, Hal Gurney, and his dog, Bert. If you watch our program with any regularity, periodically you'll hear the voice of our fine director, Mr. Hal Gurney. We thought today would be a good opportunity to visit with Hal and the privacy of his own office. Hal, do you mind if we step in for a moment? Come on in, Dave. He's so polite. <laughs> Hal, I was hoping that uh, today you could tell us about your photo essay project featuring your beloved dog, Bert, and the many fine stars and celebrities that we have on our program. I'd uh, like to do that, Dave. Go right ahead. Okay, well, I guess you want to know first how it started. Yes. Well, it started with uh, this picture right here. That's your dog, Bert. Yeah. Uh, we were living in Ireland, and I needed some passport photos, and I did them myself with the family, and... Uh, Bert was sitting around watching us, and I just swung the camera over and grabbed this shot. I said, I like this picture so much. If I like it so much, a lot of people out there are going to like it. And that's how this whole came about. Do you find that that's generally true in life, the things that you enjoy, America seems to enjoy also? Only with the picture of Bert. Everything else doesn't seem to work. Right. Now, how does it work? During the course of the show, the uh, stars are seated there, uh, some of them actually talking to me. How do you right. get the pictures? Well, it starts with uh, Barbara Gaines, uh, production assistant. She, before the show starts, she goes over and asks these people if they'd like to have a picture taken with Bert. Generally, they say, what? No. And then she shows them a clipboard. She has a clipboard and shows other people have had their photographs mm -hmm. taken before, and they seem to go along with it. Yeah. Now, wh when they see the other people uh, have cooperated in the past, it kind of gives the impression that maybe this is a money-paying project that they could mm -hmm. be part of, don't you think? Well, I don't know. 
we don't imply that there's any money involved. I see. But you know, there's there's going to be perks. They're going to they're going to they're going to get a book plug out of it. It's going to be good for them. They know that. Now, in, in all of the time that you've been uh, having these photos uh, taken, uh, uh, anybody has anyone refused to appear in the picture? Only one. Well, it was two people actually. Uh, Simon and Garfunkel refused to do it. How do you like that, Simon and Garfunkel? Do you know the reason for their refusal? In sense of the bores, I guess. <laughs> no, please. These gentlemen were guests on our program. Um, anybody you're looking forward to in the future to have their picture taken with Bert? Yeah, the three people. Three people I'd love to have, and I don't know. The three are Cary Grant, Greta Garbo, Marv Albert. Now, we've got Marv Albert. You'll see the yeah, shot of Marv right there. We've got him. Yeah. And have you thought of uh, Garbo and Grant on the show? I think they'd be great. I think a love, you know, Mary would love to see them. Hey, which one does the Rangers hockey? No, Dave. No, I think you've got the... No, that's not that Grant, no. All right, Hal, uh, let's take a look now at some sure. of those wonderful photos. Okay, well, here's the wall. Can you pick out your favorites, and we'll talk a little bit about them. The Barbara Cartland is probably the most successful. Barbara Cartland, the uh, romantic novelist. Yeah. yeah, terrific woman. Peter O'Toole. Peter, I speculate, has no recollection of this particular episode. Yeah, someone said he thought it was the VIP lounge. Uh, at lounge. He was on his way to Ireland at the time. Between flights. Yeah. yeah. All right, and uh, Sally Kellerman. Yeah, uh, just there to the left of Peter O'Toole. She's, Delightful person. Yeah. She seems to be worried about the project, like it will be used later to uh, harm her career in some fashion. Yeah. And uh, below Sally Kellerman, we have uh, Quentin Crisp. Yeah. He's pretty good-natured about the whole thing. The Slim Whitman. Yeah. Uh, I just love that picture. I don't know, I get the feeling that Slim doesn't, doesn't know he's in New York. No. He, he, he looks like he, he's uh, certain he has won something. The break dancers. Break dancers, yeah. Uh -huh. They were very good. Dr. It, Ruth, Al Frick. Yeah. Al is a member of our crew. When he found out he was to have his photo taken with Bert, he went out and rented a tuxedo. Mariel Hemingway, below Al. Yeah, she was cleaning fish. That's why she's wearing yeah. that apron. Yeah. Uh, below Mariel, of course, is uh, Bill Wendell. Uh -huh. and, uh, oh, they, I'm sorry, that, that's Zippy the Chimp. Oh, yeah. Then there's uh, Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. Who yeah, I think also may have rented a suit for the occasion. <laughs> And of course, Cheryl Teagues. Steve Allen. That's one of Steve the Allen. early ones. Yeah. And they kind of set the tone for this. To the right of Steve Allen is brother Theodore. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this collection. Yeah. Jay Leno, who has no idea why his photo is being taken. Klaus Kinski. Terry Garr, who's been with us many times. Uh, over on the other end, we have uh, Carl Reiner, uh, Lauren Hutton. Yeah, another... have, your dog has had some beautiful women. Magic Johnson from the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, Robert Duvall. That's a, I Roy think Rogers. that's terrific. Yeah, I think you told him uh, in order to get this picture, you told Roy that uh, Bert had also been stuffed. Frank Zappa. Yeah. This is Boy George. An attractive human. This is Robin Williams with a beard. Sandra Bernhardt. Yeah. Also another. Pretty girl. Yeah. Barbara Walters. Grace Jones. Actually, in this photo, the dog looks frightened. The man you love him, you can't live without him. Don King. Don is out, uh, now managing Bert, isn't he? That's right. Okay. Thanks for Thanks, Hal. I enjoyed this. That's Hal Gurney. Know your staff. Let me, uh... Let me, uh, one, one bit of clarification here. Darcy Hetrich, another member of our staff, the assistant to the associate producer, asks the talent their permission to have those photos taken, and then Barbara Gaines, the production assistant, takes the photograph. Now, that's the way the official scorecard should read. We'll be right back after you take a look at this. program. Let me tell you who will be here tomorrow night. Ronnie Spector, original member of the Who, Paul? Fabulous, Ronnie. You're, you're, you're excited about her being today. here tomorrow night. Boy, am I ever excited. Okay, this Ronnie Spector will be me. here. Also, Father Guido Sarducci. And uh, later tonight, you'll uh, meet uh, Annie Leibovitz, and uh, we're going to show you some photographs from her recently published book. But first, 
Tonight we're going to do another segment of our Know Your Staff series, and tonight I would like to introduce to you a woman who I have worked with for quite a long time. She at one point was the head writer on this very television show, and she is currently a regular writer and the producer of the remote segments. Welcome, please, ladies and gentlemen, Meryl Marco. Meryl Marco, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, why don't you explain uh, what it was I said that you do on the show. Well, I produce what we call the remote segments, which are the segments that take place out of the studio. In other words, the things that are done on the street, the donut shop tours and the do films by Bob the Dog. Bob the and Dog, and uh, what did we do recently? Anything recently? Uh, recently, the... Uh, Hook up at our home. Oh, that's right. For the cable, cable television. Uh, television. Yeah, that was uh, yes, that was produced by you. Now you have uh, some videotape, uh, some examples of your work. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, what I brought along was uh, I've actually been on the show a lot, although I've been unidentified. Uh, I'm the other pair of feet in the Bob the Dog films. Okay. And so I thought I. <laughs> that's that's what we're going to take a look at here. Uh, watch your monitors at home. Uh, run to the oh, neighbor's house here. and use their TVs. Come here. Come on, Bob. Come help me. It's that's me right there. Yeah, I'll be coming up here on the right. There you are again. There I am. Okay. Uh -huh. There you are. Yeah. There I am. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very nicely done. Very nice. Very nice. Bob moves pretty well for an old fat dog, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, now, um, well, I mentioned that we had worked for uh, quite a long time together, haven't we? Yeah, we, we really have. How many years has it been? I guess it's been about uh, five or six years. Mm -hmm. so am, yeah. I, am I allowed to mention that we're engaged? That we're engaged? Well, yeah, sure, you can mention that. Why not? I, I wasn't sure if it was okay. Yeah. No, it's, it's okay. Well, see, I was sort of hesitant because I know you don't like to talk about your personal life at all on the show, and I thought maybe I was jumping in over my head here. But, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, people actually write into the show a lot, and they want to know personal things about you, and you never say anything about yourself No, that's personally. right. I don't, I don't like to talk ab about myself. <laughs> so I thought, since I am on the show right now, I might take this opportunity to uh, answer personal questions about you, if anyone had my thoughts. Uh, what, didn't Ed have some more kids we were going to introduce, Barry? No, I, I guess that's all right, sure. Is that all right? Sure, if you don't mind. I don't mind, sure. Okay, you sure it's all right? Fine. Okay. Does anyone have any uh, questions of a personal nature that they might want answered about Dave? Uh, is he funny all the time? Well, no, you really couldn't say he's funny all the time. He's, he's you know, he's occasionally funny, but he's... Uh, <laughs> He's like any ordinary human being. He's funny some of the time. He's serious some of the time. He's insecure a lot of the time. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, sir. Nice question. Uh, does he get recognized a lot, and it, does it disrupt your lives much? Uh, well, he's getting recognized increasingly more as the show is on the air more. Uh, uh, yeah, no, it doesn't disrupt our lives very much, no. Thank you very much for the question. <laughs> thank Things you. are not bad. No. Yeah. Uh, what's he like in bed? <laughs> I think I can answer that. Actually, I do have some recent findings that I thought I could share with you. <laughs> As you can see, I've done some extensive studies on this topic in our sleep laboratory at the home. And uh, on this first chart, we see a general drop in his overall metabolic rate. In bed. His sleep patterns are generally pretty erratic. Uh, REM represents the rapid eye movement, which is your deepest level of sleep. And as you can see, he, uh, he's jolted occasionally into awareness in this specific time. Uh, this is when he discovered that I short-sheeted the bed. And, 
This one was when I put his hand in a pan of warm water. <laughs> he loves a good joke. Now, cut that out. And uh, finally, in his uh, pulse rate, in bed, you see he has a general decline. It's a calmer pulse rate as opposed to his most excitable time, which, of course, is watching a two-hour love boat where you see <laughs> peak excitement. That pretty much, uh, this is all the findings we have so far. Of course, we're going to keep on testing, and I'll keep you We've up to date. We've only on begun to scratch the surface, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, this concludes this segment of Know Your Staff, ladies and gentlemen. Meryl Marco, thank you very much. <laughs> nice of you to be here. We're up the road back with photographer Amy Leibovitz. It's time now for a segment we like to call Know Your Staff, So We Do. The subject of tonight's segment is our very own guitarist, a fellow who has virtually grown up in show business. Please say hello now to Mr. Steve Kahn. Steve, nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. When we say you grew up in show business, explain how that happened. Well, Dave, as you know, because you're in the business. That's right. My father is the four-time Academy Award-winning lyricist, Sammy Kahn. Yes. And so... <laughs> so uh, that is sort of how I came into the world of show business. Why don't you, why don't you tell the folks uh, for what he received his Academy Awards? Okay, if I can remember, it's uh, All the Way, High Hopes, Three Coins in the Fountain, and Call Me Irresponsible. And, and and a, and a major force in American music. It's safe to say that, isn't it? That he is. Yeah. And before we stomp all over my, my childhood, I just wanted to <laughs> now, present to you my dad's rhyming dictionary. Well, that's very thoughtful of you. I'll, you know, I, I'm, I'm always needing words that rhyme, and this will <laughs> fill the bill, because one day I'm going to win an Academy Award for a song, and this one, now I'm well on my way. Uh, now, Stephen, did you have a normal childhood growing up in these uh, heady show business surroundings? Well, essentially it, it was. You see, at the time, my father was sort of known as the, the court jester of Frank Sinatra's Rat Pack. So I thought it was uh, very normal uh, to have a Sunday barbecue and you have Uncle Frank over. Oh, so, really? Yeah. That's very impressive. Now, tell the folks about your bar mitzvah. Well, <laughs> okay. Um, basically, there, there are sort of three, let's call them branches of the Jewish religion, and there's the Orthodox, the Conservative, and then they created this other category called the Reformed, which I think was sort of especially for California. <laughs> A bar mitzvah in California isn't recognized in the other 49 states. <laughs> and that's, that's what you got. Right. See, at, at 12 and a half, you're told, oh, by the way, you'll be getting bar mitzvah in six months. <laughs> okay. Now, we have here a collection, a very, uh, an unbelievable collection of it photographs is. taken at your bar mitzvah. Let's take a look at them, and you, you tell us who and what. If okay. You will, now, Steve. this is uh, my dad and I kind of... Uh, Posing on the pulpit right. where I delivered the, the, the Haftorah phonetically. <laughs> phonetically. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, this is the later at the party, and here we have, uh, in the middle, you see George Burns and Gracie Allen. Yeah. Leo DeRocher, former baseball manager. Right. Matt Gray, a close associate of Mr. Dean Martin. And Dr. Murray Sacklad, dentist to the stars. <laughs> <laughs> Gracie looks terrific. Did you she know her well when you were a kid? Um, she used to call me, and uh, we'd talk every once in a while. You actually had a, a little... Uh... I'm kidding. Oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. All right. <laughs> now, this is unbelievable. This is Run a great this one picture. down for us. We have Dean Martin. Yep. Uh, Janet Lee is next to him on his... Uh, well, on the right there. Then next to the two of them, we have uh, the former vice president of gambling at the Sands Hotel, <laughs> Mr. Carl Cohen and his wife. And on the left... We have my mom. Yeah, very striking looking woman. Now, th these people were just there at your bar mitzvah reception. They were right just there. there. All right. Now, uh, this is a very interesting picture. Uh, this is me kissing Dean Martin's wife, Jeannie. <laughs> Later, they, of course, uh, broke up. Uh, sure. Yes, sorry. <laughs> okay. Now, you weren't named in that action, were you? Uh, 
I don't, I don't think so. I think I escaped. Here we have. Here we have a group of my friends with uh, Carrie Fisher's mom, Debbie Reynolds. Yeah. Well, she looks terrific there also. Fetching gown. How many folks turned out for this thing? It was a large gathering. I don't really remember. Just under what shows up in Pasadena for the Tournament of Roses parade, I think. <laughs> All right, and here we have Stephen. Okay, we have my dad. Tony Curtis is in the middle. Wow. Uh, conductor Axel Stordahl is on the right, and on the left was the uh, once most famous L.A. restaurateur, Michael Romanoff. Yep. It was a hell at his restaurant. Where was that located? Uh, in Beverly Hills, I think, somewhere. Now, this, of course, this is probably the most interesting part of the whole evening. You're a this handsome is, little kid. I was a cute guy. This is uh, me with Janet Lee, and at my bar mitzvah, Tony Curtis and Janet Lee, who were married at the time, right. had a terrible fight and went storming out. It was a real scream. I was named in this <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we got a, a whole uh, lot more pictures here. Maybe we can get to some of these. We got to do a commercial first. Uh, we'll be right back with Steve Kahn. <laughs> Okay, here we have uh, Steve Kahn, of course, in the middle, and Kirk Douglas and Edward G. Robinson, also That's at right, the Bar Mitzvah party. Joan Collins in the back. No, no. Uh, we have a copy here of uh, Steve's album, Eyewitness, Steve Kahn, and also on this record is her own uh, Steve Jordan. Uh, thank you very much, Steve. We'll finish up these photos another night. We'll see you folks Monday. Have a good weekend. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.